Today we're going to be going over Sunnyland 2D, and I'm starting from the Unity Hubs new project. I'm on this version right here, 2020.3.14f1. 2020 yeah, it's the latest version I have installed, but others should work. This is 2D, name it whatever you want. I'm just naming it Sunnyland 2D. Treat the project. Okay, everything's loaded. I'm just going to move all this stuff around what I tend to do go to window package manager I tend to leave this up here so first go into built not built in go to your assets you should download Sunnyland 2d already from the asset store which if you go right here it's moved but you can it'll open it right away in whatever search engine you use I go there, sign in, and look for Sunnyland 2D. It is free. And it's not letting me close it. There it goes. My right click is giving me issues, so it's something I'm going to go through a lot. So go through in project. Make sure to update it's Visual Studio Editor. That is what you're using, but Visual Studio Code Editor also works. Just make sure to update both of those right array then you can upload these other ones that will call you updates but we can do that i'm going to do that now and then i'll cut back into when it's done updating okay we are back so once you're done with that just go back here go back to your assets go to sunny land and if you didn't do it already click on import and let's wait for all that to go through then click import when it goes up there shows up there you just gotta wait for that to go through. First thing we're gonna do, go to right click, 2D, tile map, then rectangular. We're gonna get two here, just name it background. Control D, then F2, foreground. So Control D is how you duplicate, F2 is to rename. Then some simple things to remember, Q, hand, W, when you're hiding on an object, that's how you move it. E, rotate, R, scale. Then T is the direct tool, which basically allows you to do all three. Though it's just not using it, depending on this. And Y, Y is actually new. Oh, uh, they changed how the direct tool and this. Okay, they split these tools, it seems. Yeah, there's now a new a move, rotate, or scale to select an object, which is new actually, but you don't really use these three. There's an edit tool, which doesn't do anything yet, but yeah, we we'll only stick to Q, W, E, R, and T. Yeah, those are the ones we're going to be sticking to. So, we're going to go over some of the basic stuff real quick as well. So first, this is what I'm doing. You guys don't have to do it in this order, but this is what I'm doing right away. You go into layer, over here, click add sorting layer, and create three new ones. Create three, this middle one, entity, this one, back, you can name it back, and I'm just naming this one full. You can put the full names, I'm just doing this for easy. And these are layers that we will use later. I don't know why I guess I actually clicked on that. So let's go this the background, this to foreground. Okay. Now let's go to window, go to 2D tile palette. And I'm going to move this right over here. And I'm going to open this up a bit. So you can also just use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down. You hold the mouse wheel, you hold middle mouse to pan around, or you can do left click. Go. Oh. When you're not using, when you're in, when you press W, you can use not W, Q. If hand, and you can hold left click, or you can do middle mouse. But when you're in any other view, you do middle mouse to rotate. Because it quickly goes out to the, the um, hand option, the hand tool, the move. Yeah, it's called the hand tool. Speaking of Blender, we have practicing Blender early. Okay. Now, now you can see we already have the tile palette. 
That's because Sunnyland starts us off with one for its main environment for some reason. This is new, you just have to make it yourself. Uh, so I'll show you how to make one. So I'm going to go click on the background here, let's say label back. Change it to multiple, then for this tutorial, we're doing it 16 units, click apply. Just go to spray editor, and go to slice, grid cell size by cell size, and 16 by 16, and click slice. And this sets us up to a tile map that we can import. And let's click apply. And this should be applied. Then we can just close out of here. To make a new tile path, you can just click the arrow here. Click create new tile path. This one I'm going to name background. Let's create that. I'm just going to move into the tile sets folder. Then we just drag it. And on my other tab, I'm just going to drag and drop over here. Also load in tile sets. Okay, so while this all goes on, I want you to put everything, and I mean everything, 16 by 16 pixels per unit. So first thing I'm going to do, just mouse, hold left click and highlight. Highlight the whole entire image. And then just drag and drop it. So I'm going to drag it somewhere in the middle. And put one here. And then just drag it around. Oh, don't actually hold and drag because then it's going to look all funky like this. Just go to the end of it. Make sure it's lined up and click again. Make this as long as you want. And I've just noticed I've been editing in the... Man, make sure you're editing in the background. So now I'm going to have to redo all of that. Remember, do not hold, click, and drop unless you're using one tile that is the same. Or a group of tiles out of the same image. And I'm just going to go this far. Now we can switch to the background and go to the main palette that they give you with. And I'm just going to make something simple. I'm just going to make a simple starting platform like this. You just click over here, I use the wrong one from this edge. Just click over here, click, drag. Only one to the same one. Yeah, I got, they have... Okay, yeah. you can drag them into like an image like this. This is only one color, and it matches with these ones right here at the end. So that's when you can click and drag, but other than that, I don't suggest clicking and dragging unless you're like... Doing something like this real quickly. Try to make something like this, which doesn't look that good, in my opinion. I'm actually going to go do something like this at the end. And there are a bunch of tools up here. There's an erase two. I don't know if there's shortcuts to them, so I'm just going to click on them. Okay. Boom. We have a small little talent here that looks pretty neat. You can go on the game view to see how it looks in game. And you can see these lines. That's because the original image here for these tiles aren't actually full 1x1 one one pixel sprites. So click on the grid and change cell size to 0 0.99 for the X and Y. Then boom, it is covered. And I guess I'm going to have to recenter my main camera so it shows the whole thing. Actually, no, I'm just going to go into scenes and just edit it out. So I'm just going to... I'm going to show you how to actually highlight. So if you do this move selection tool, now you have to highlight, highlight, and click on the move tool. You can actually move this. So I'm just going to move it by one. You can move this whole chunk you highlighted. Just by that. Then just click enter. There's also if you highlight I was on the right. The highlight is the cursor. This is sucked in area. You can also do this. Okay. Why didn't that work? Oh yeah, no, with the copy tool or the uh, the select tool. This little thing right here, you just highlight anywhere on here. You can even highlight in here and it'll copy it all. 
make sure to save every so often as well. So first, we're in the player already. Let's go to idle, and we're not we're not going to be using these. We're going to be making our own. So let's go back, change this to sixteen pixels. I'm going to drag and drop the first one here. This would be our player. This would go into the entity sorting layer, and we can put it at the player tag. It's already here, and I'm going to move him one and a half up. Now, sorry if I'm going too fast for some of you, but I'm doing as much as I can to not have the series be super, super long. Okay, so this is the rep tool. You can like do stuff with this, and I click the skip tool. And this is the scale tool. You can only scale this way, but with the rect tool, which is T, you can also rotate. And if it's just 3D, you can also rotate the other way, but no. Okay. Now, go to your assets menu. Just click here, click assets. Right click. Okay, we're going to create a script folder. Then inside that script folder, we are going to create a, another folder called player. And inside the player folder, right click, C shop script, and we're going to name it player controller. Now, before we open it up, we're going to go back here and we're going to edit some stuff in these layers. So first of all, what we're going to do is add a composite client, which I already had to open somehow. And this will automatically add a rigid body, which will return to static. Then the composite collider, we do nothing yet. Then we add a biomap collider 2D. Then click on use by composite. What this does is turn any tiles you place into one solid collider. So that way, if we add collision to our player, they will already be colliding with the player as long as they're on the foreground. So that's what the rigid body is what allows gravity to take effect, but since we're on static, they won't be affected by gravity. So, go to player, we're going to add a rigid body 2D. We're going to use auto mass, because that's what I like to do. That's all we're doing, then we add a box collider 2D. This box collider does it basically. The box collider is going to be these all little fox kit players hitbox basically. So whatever touches these box is going to end up getting collision. So we're going to not be on the tail, but I'd say like around here is where we should be. So we don't want his tail him being hit on the tail and end up killing him or hurting him. Whatever you want to do, have him have one health, have him have 20 health. And this like end of his foot. Yeah. I'm actually just going to leave it like this. You guys don't have to. I'm just going to get as close as possible. Let's get as close as possible as you can. You like to zoom in all the way and keep moving it. So that's going to take forever. Like she's just only doing that when you're using a sin machine camera. Just so you can have it be the hitbox be as close as possible, which I'll show you what I'm talking about later on. Then the feet should be fine already. Yeah. Feet should be fine. When you use auto mass simulated, make sure this is checked. And make sure to save. Then once you click play, the character has gravity. Can't do anything with this yet. But we have gravity. The player can jump, fall, that's it. Now we're going to do drag and drop this onto the player. Drag and drop the player control script onto the player. And did I not? It did not drag. Okay. I'll just drag and drop it like that. Yeah, I guess I didn't want to drag and drop the way I did it, but whatever. Now, double click here to open up the script. Then we wait for the Visual Studios to load. As long as the script is open from Unity, it should automatically be using Unity Engine. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Chains of Void, Awake, Start, into Awake. And what this does, instead of starting 
before the first frame, this starts the game will load. I'm just going to refresh it. This is awake is called when the game is initializing slash starting up. That's not what it officially says. That's what I remember it does. So when I didn't miss this belt. If spelling is important, by the way, and here, so make sure you spell everything awake. Like this, I didn't even spell awake right. Yeah, you use these slashes here. This is how you add a note. It doesn't affect the code. It just shows a note. That's why it's highlighting in green. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to create a movement script. So I'm going to just make a separate void called movement in here. Then we're going to do if on dot delta time is not equal to zero, then movement can occur. So what here, this is how, this is the text, if time is moving, then we can move. So if we have it set, if we have it set to zero, that means the game is paused. Nothing can move, no scripts are going to run, except for the pause menu, except for scripts that only allow them to... Except for scripts that call for time dot delta time to equal for zero, then only those scripts will work. But times, but scripts that require if times dot delta time to not equal zero, then those ones won't work. So first thing after doing this, we're going to need to call our rigid body and box collider. So there's two ways you can do this. You can do a public rigid body two D. And I'm calling it RB or a serialized field. Serialized field private. And this is going to be our box collider. We're going to call it collider 2D. Cool. Now, if you do either of those, this is, I suggest not doing this for everything. There's only a few things you can do it. But you can go to our next vector window, then you can just drag and drop them here. But this is okay to do if you're a beginner, but you do not want to do this. And this is why we have a wait here. I changed the start to a wait instead. So we're going to have both of these be private. But then how are we going to call them if we can't? You know, they're not going to be called here. They're not going to be called here. And there gets nothing. Nero is not going to show up. But we're not calling these variables anywhere. So instead, we're going to do rb equals get component, and depending where this component comes from, since we're using, since we don't have anything else attached to this player, we're just going to use get component, but it may have to be get component and child, get component and parent. So like, an example, this is the parent of background and foreground, and these are the child of the grid. So if you want to get any of their components, you're going to have to specify if it's from the parent or from the child. Since we don't have either of those, we'll just use get component and use less than greater signs here. Rigid body 2D parentheses. Then just copy, paste that. Then change this one to coal and collided 2D. Then... I misspelled. Capitalization is also important. So, then it's not going to show up here, but everything's working. You can see we have an error because code does not exist. So, what we're also going to do is we're going to create in this movement function, we're going to create a float called h direction. And that's an equal input at get axis for our. Horizontal. Now, why we're doing this is because horizontal would be the same as if input dot get button down there's key code dot a yeah, it's get key down. So what we're doing here 
What up? So, horizontal does, it's basically, if you use input.get axis or horizontal, it's basically these two all in one line, well, except for the if input.get, it's basically, okay. While we're doing this, instead of this, it's because this, these two right here are the same as this. It can detect which one you're pressing down with less code in a way. This is just more functional, but you could do either or. They'll both work the same, but this will just be a little bit easier on the coding side. So we're just going to get rid of this, get rid of one of them. Because then we're going to have to do this and else if. And we're going to change this to h dragon is less greater than zero. So if h direction is greater than zero, it detects if we're pressing this. This detects d, the d key. Then we do object velocity new vector two. Wait a minute. Yeah, I did this wrong. This is the this detects when A is pressed. My bad. My bad. Yeah, this one's it wants H directions to be less than zero, so maybe we're going to go in the, to the left. So we're going to do RB dot velocity equals new vector two. Then we forgot some lines. Sorry about that. We're going to add a private float speed plus 15f. I'm doing 15 to test. But, okay, a float is going to be a, oh, I got we collect my thoughts, I haven't done this in a while. So floats are, can be anything from decimal places, or in this case, they're get access raw. You can use this for a float, and float a boolean. Which I'm going to make this one you. I'm going to call is an error equals false. Booleans are true and false. And private integers only numbers hell. And I was going to set that to equal to five. So these are just examples of flute, uh, float, bowl, and rule and string. A float, boolean, integer can be prime whole numbers, true or false statement decimals but you have to have an f at the end and then there's one more a string a string is i misspelled it strings can be words basically that they all can be used but i don't really have much i haven't used many strings but strings can be used for like when you want to give a name to something and have it follow around that's that's honestly all I can I can all I can think of for strings at the moment. But when we remove strings, we're not going to use them yet. Then we do negative speeds move to the left and rb dot velocity dot y because we only want to move left and right. And we're not jumping, so we're going to leave rb dot velocity y the same. And that way we don't mess with how the player jumps. How if we move up and down, we only want to move left and right. Then we are going to do the same here. We forgot this. Yeah, if you have these in else if you have to put the brackets, then do something like this. Except this is how we detect how we're going to move right, and there's an extra bracket there. So we're going to do the same thing here, except speed is going to be positive. Let's save that. Wait for it to configure. Yeah, and we're getting an error because is an error is in here, but it's never used. Oh, look. We're zooming. We're moving, and that's practically all we're doing. Now I can say, why are we moving so fast? That's because we're at 15. So, let's see, we don't even have this. I'm going to get the speed up. We want to be able to edit the speed, I feel like, in the... Can you serialize float private? Because that's 
We can change our speed va variable to a private float. Just a serialized float, I meant. I'm going to serialize our speed so it shows up in this menu here once we save. It show up here, then we can edit it through the through the inspector window. It is late when I'm recording this, sorry for my voice. Okay. So we're going to edit this here. And boom. Moving slow now, but still quite fast. Also, you can see we're not moving. We're not changing directions. So we're going to do, th do this. We're going to set a local scale. Okay, so to get our player to rotate, we're going to do transform dot local scale. I misspelled that. Equals new vector two, and if you highlight here, it's represents have two D vectors and points. I wish that would explained itself better. But we're gonna do negative one, and one, and copy paste it. Since we're only using a vector two, you only need X and Y. That's what those two represent. Then when we click play, we're rotating. Still moving super fast though. I suggest I'm changing gravity scale to two, five. I'm gonna have it be two and our movement speed's gonna be five. Two, I'm gonna change it to eight. Because I feel like that's going to be a bit better. And yeah, they don't save when you're in play mode, so you're going to have to go back and forth, make sure to remember it, and edit that. But yeah, we can now walk, but we can't jump yet. And I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, I just remembered some. I just remembered something. So, you can see, when we do this, we're sliding a little bit. We don't want to, if you don't want to slide, you can, if you want to slide, then you can just skip this step. But if you slide too much, or you don't want to, if you, want, you don't slide at all, you don't want to slide too much, change the gravity scale and change the angle of drag. But this can affect how jumping works. You can like move too fast, move too slow. But if you don't want to jump at all, and you don't want to mess with these, then follow these steps. So we're going to do. We're going to do an else if statement here. Else if input dot get button up horizontal. Then we're going to do I would have velocity is new vector two zero. Y. But here's the thing, this is where his jumping comes in. Uh, watch this. Okay, you want to show this? See, look, we're immediately stopping. For real life physics, if you move and jump, you shouldn't slow down to like, you shouldn't slow, move forward and then stop all of a sudden. That's not how real life physics works. You should be you will be moving forward slightly if you jump and move forward because that's how physics work. But when do is and you're gonna do you have to do other and this is how, and is just the end symbol. This is all and this is equals to and this is less than equal to greater than equal to. But we're going to be using and for this one and. Is an air e I just wrote that again equals true. No, no, I actually want it to be set to false. My bad. Then when this happens, we should still not be messing around with the this. We're gonna be stopping here, even though you may want a slight speed for how fast we're going. I don't know. I feel like this is fine. A lot of games do that. Now to get onto jumping, we're going to create a void jump. We're going to add another serialized field. 
fire boat, jump force. Now I'm gonna make this 10F. Let's change this to 8. And once you find your right force, I'd say you just make these private. That's up to you. I'm gonna do orbit of velocity equals new vector two. Similar to how we do movement. But say we're gonna do RBR velocity didx, then R then jump force. Then here and do if input dot get button down equals space. Then we're gonna do jump. Now you can actually do, you don't have to do this, but you could actually just leave it here. But this makes it a lot more easier to call it out. Call it out. Now, you may have to call, if you want to call it the jump out for something in the future, then don't do that. But if you don't think you would, then just leave it like this. Don't make a separate function for jump. Now wait for that to update. I guess we forgot to do something. We need to set to is. We need to set the is in air equals to true. And for when we're not doing it in one of these, we want to need one one equal sign. Okay. After we start unity, let. Input button space is not set up. I think it was supposed to be jump and not space. So that was my mistake. Yep, it was meant to be jump. Oh yeah, look, we're sliding again. That's because we don't have a way to detect when we're on the ground or not. So just infinitely press space bar. Which we need to fix that. And to do that, we need to make a... Actually, no, I'm going to... So yeah, let's just do it here. Serialized field, private, a layer mass, ground. So, to do a layer mass, we are going to create... Yes, this is going to be foreground. It's going to be in a layer titled ground. This has to be in foreground. Put that there. Put that there. We'll go back to jump. And is touching. Hold dot is touching. Touching the layers ground. It's touching layer ground. Then boom. And it goes true. Else is near equals false. Okay, now the isn't air function for me is actually new. I only experimented with the with the sliding stop. I didn't experiment with this. Yeah, look, it's still freezing. It's not turning it. It's only flickering it. So I'm going to do this, change this to a public rule real quick. Just so we can watch and see what happens. Oops. Watch when we're jumping, it's not even not even detecting what in the air. So I'm gonna get rid of this statement here. I'm 
on ground. Okay. So, looks like I'm going to make a new thing called if call dot is touching layers ground is in here equals false. And in here equals true. Yeah, I changed it to false. So if this is already true, and they're touching to get this layer, then this becomes false. What this should do, this is an experiment, because I haven't messed with this myself yet. This should determine if we're in the ground or not. No. So, else if. I'll make this an else if then. And see if that else if helps. That is odd, because only this is ground. Hmm. Yeah, it's doing a flicker. So it's flickering. Oh yeah, we can also fall off the map so we don't have anything to catch us or anything. Okay, well, I think this is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to experiment with the code, get that working. Then we... I'll continue with animations, getting an idle, walking, jumping, all that done. And if you guys want to practice, I suggest you, oh, my tile map's closed. I want you all to get the tile maps open again and stop building out your level. Just do that, which you have already. And then I'll see you guys in the next episode.